These two Bobolo, seven dollars. Too Today expensive. I can show you how to make your own. So I bought all of these cassava from the store for about three dollars or less. And now I'm gonna peel them and prepare them for uh, Bobolo. For the beginning stages of making the bobolo, I will peel the cassava, cut it, and then soak it for three days in water. Completely peel the skin off of the cassava till you meet full flesh. It's kind of like sweet potatoes. I mean, cut. soaking in the water for three days in my garage. So now the cassava has been soaking for four days in water. I'm going to drain the water, rinse it, and then I'm going to be blending it in my juicer. See, it's so soft that the water is kind of breaks it apart. So now that it's rinsed, I'm going to take out the little roots that are in between the center. The ribbing. You have to really love your husband a lot if he loves Bobolo to go through all this work and this smell. The smell is strong and I hope your husband will appreciate all the hard work and the smell that you had to go through to so he can enjoy his bobolo. Now I'm gonna use the juicer to blend my fermented cassava. fermented cassava through the juicer. So here's the cassava paste from the juicer. I'm going to divide it in half. Half of it's going to be for water fufu and the other half is going to be for bobolo. So when it, you juice the cassava, sometimes some of the runny, the juice liquid from the uh, juicer might come out. So I'm gonna add this into the bag for the water food food for the next time for later. Here's the water foo food now in a Ziploc bag, and I'm gonna put it in the freezer for next time I wanna cook it. So to wrap the bobolo, I'm gonna use parchment paper and then wrap it with aluminum foil. So you take some of it. Now take parchment paper and roll the top. 
tight as you can. So now I've added water to the pot, so I'm going to add the, the bobolo to the pot. And I'm going to cover and cook it for about an hour, let it boil and cook for an hour. And then I'm going to also check the water in between to make sure that there's enough water to keep the cooking going well. Let's take off the lid. Looks like it's done. So we got homemade bobolo and homemade goosey. So I barbecue roasted some fish, fried plantain, and the bobolo is gonna go wonderful with those things. Who wants to eat bobolo? <laughs> This is so beautiful. Hello, Homemade Dad. bobolo. Uh, yeah. One for you, one for you. Mm -hmm. ah, I have lots of pepper. Rose, one pepper, and layers. Pepper, and some mayonnaise here. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the food that we're about to eat. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 He's going to invite the bobolo. Do you know how to cut fish? I'm going to cut more fish. Mm. You can eat the whole one. It's just for you. Mm. Olivia, that's wonderful. Mm. 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 and myself will probably just eat the plantains and the fish but I make this mostly for my husband because he loves it the most. Like, share, subscribe to my wife's channel. The bubble is very good. If you cook some at your home, send some to me. Thank you. Let me give some final tips. If your cassava paste is too runny, put it in a cheesecloth, squeeze out all the excess liquid. Tip number two, if you don't have a juicer, you can use your blender and then at the end, use a cheesecloth to squeeze out the liquid. If you have a pressure cooker, you can cook it in there for 15 minutes only. After putting the cassava through the juicer, put your fingers inside the paste to make sure there's no chunks of cassava or the ribbing through the center is not in there. You want a smooth paste. After three to four days, if some of the cassava is not soft, put it through the blender anyways. 